Hey, hey, everybody, it's Steph. So in this vlog, I'm going to talk about universal principles and how they apply to coding and other aspects of life. So first of all, what's a universal principle? A universal principle is an idea or a concept, a truth that seems to be uh, valid across all disciplines. So it works in coding, it can work in business, it can work in health. I know it's kind of weird, kind of weird. I started to identify these universal principles, believe it or not, when I was like 14, 15 years old. Now, some of you may know I was deep into martial arts. I started doing martial arts when I was 10. And I was pretty solid in my martial arts until, you know, my late 30s, you know, maybe early 40s. I still do a little training these days, not too much. And to be honest with you, I haven't done much martial arts training in the last five, six years. I'm starting to do a little bit. I'm teaching some people at a box now. But anyway, I started to identify universal principles in martial arts. You would see a concept or an idea that was, let's say, in um, boxing, and you see the same ideas, the same principles in Muay Thai or Taekwondo or even Aikido, um, yada, 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 yada. So I started seeing these type of types of universal principles early on and then I started seeing principles that I learned about in martial arts they applied to business so let's do a few obvious ones so you get the idea and then I'll get back to coding so for instance persistence persistence and efforts will get you success whether it be in your business you got to be persistent you got to keep move pushing it forward whether it be writing an app whether it be uh, just staying in shape, it's about consistency and persistence. That's kind of obvious, right? It's an obvious universal principle. There are more uh, esoteric universal principles out there that can really help you out. So let's get into what the first one that applies directly to web development and coding, and not just web development, any type of development, any type of coding. And that is the idea of incremental progress. So what is incremental progress? Well, when it comes to coding, it has to do with uh, uh, not trying to come out with the perfect app in version one. That doesn't happen typically. Uh, well, never happens. You notice how apps, 10 and electronics and computers, whatever, cars, they tend to uh, find their way sort of they tend to, to get to where they want to be in terms of quality with version three it's the strangest thing you see that even with tv shows uh tv shows tend to really find their stride typically in this third fourth season to really get into it you know what i think of going back to the 90s is seinfeld seinfeld was kind of eh, until version three until well excuse me until the third season same thing with coding and apps like i never touch a first version of any new device. I always wait to version three unless it's really, 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 really compelling, really good. Typically, it, they, they tend to find their footing in version three. So the whole idea of an incremental progression towards a final goal. So when you look at coding, again, app versions one, two, three, right? Third version, but also in terms of, let's get into some more micro detail about the coding itself. Again, the principle is incremental uh, refinement is the key to success in all these things. So when you first write your app, I always suggest that you write A to Z very quickly. Well, and then you go back and then you start refining elements of your app. You know, refining the, the database access, refining the UI, refining uh, the usability, refining uh, the database structures even, and so on and so forth. Incremental incremental you don't try to do these huge huge changes all at once you know besides the first effort where you sort of set the groundwork and then the third so you go cycle one you sort of just build from a to z you get your app working barely right alpha code second pass around second iteration you go through your app and you you start refining it you get it out of alpha you get into beta and the final revision for the first release is to get to your first release, your version one, you do your final refinements and you clean up and so forth. So we could even dig down even deeper into code where we start looking at the code base itself. 
Um, I like the concept of, uh, well, it's not my opinion, it's everybody's opinion now. You, this, this idea in coding, uh, it's uh, I, all of a sudden, the term just jumped right out of my head. Something of concerns, distribution of concerns. I'll just use that term for now. Basically, the, the, the idea, the principle here, is different from incrementalism. The principle here is that uh, separation of concerns. There you go. That is the term you can look it up in, on the web, separation of concerns. The idea is that you have, you develop your code base in accordance to um, what major components of your app does. So you have uh, a, a library of code just for your database access. You have a library of code just for your user interface, your visual, right? You keep your, you know, it goes with this whole model view controller design pattern, separation of concerns. Then you might have uh, another aspect of your code base that just deals with, for instance, asynchronous uh, messaging, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I talked about this where you have, uh, where you have this separation of concerns. This allows you to, first of all, you're gonna have a cleaner app because you don't have database access code mixed in with your validation code and so on. And so that, that allows you right from the start to have a cleaner app, but at the same time allows you to separate the work. So you can have your database coders do the database work. You have your validation guy work on all the validation libraries, another person work on the asynchronous messaging, another person work on the UI front end. So that's, that's cool. Um, so when you get even deeper into the code, so we talked about app creation process, right? It's it's uh, it's incremental once where you know cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, right? And then we now we're looking at separation of concerns. This allows again for cleaner apps, and then you can go right into the code itself. You can look at um, how you would uh, incrementally improve the quality of your code base. So you, let's say you write out your your, all your methods, all your objects. I'm assuming you have a bit of programming knowledge at this point in, in the video. Um, so you're writing, you've written all your objects and you've written all your methods and so forth. And now it's time to go back and to do something called refactoring. You go back, you check out uh, your, your methods, you start looking to make sure that, uh, you, you know, that your methods are clean and simple. You make sure there's consistency in the naming conventions and so forth. Again, you incrementally improve the quality of your app as you go through. Now, so that's that's the principle. Incremental improvement is the best way to get to where you're going. Now, think about nature. That's how nature works. Nature is very slow. In incrementally, you see changes. It's typically not a good idea to see huge changes happen quickly. You get a lot of destruction in that situation. So when it comes to, let's say, building a business, again, building a business, you define the basic concept of business. Now, you know, what you do when you build a business, you want to identify a problem, you identify a problem, you identify a need, and then you see if you can use technology or develop services or whatnot to address that problem. So you sort of come with the big picture, just like you come with the big picture for the app. And then in business, I can tell you from experience from, you know, I've been building businesses since, I was, since I've been 18, it's an incremental process. You start with the framework, you start reacting with clients, and you start, you start refining your business processes. You start refining things, refining, refining, refining. And eventually, uh, and it usually takes, most businesses take about three years three to five years before they really start to roll, they start really start to go well, because you start fixing all the problems. Um, again, the number three, it's like, that's another universal concept, right? It's, uh, it's, it's biblical even, it's kind of interesting. So yeah, so even when building a business, there's this incremental process at, in, where you, you're refining and refining and refining, and eventually you find yourself with a nice solid business even with weight loss. Now, you may look back at some old videos on YouTube from 2008, where I'm, I'm like much heavier, I'm like, I'm like 30, 40 pounds heavier. And uh, how did I lose that weight you know, since that time? And I've kept it off for the most part. Again, I, was, I took the approach of incrementally reducing my weight, not by cutting off the foods I love, but just by slowly, slowly reducing, just slowly reducing my cut, 
right? The intake of calories and at the same time slowly, slowly increasing my exercise. That's all. So I still eat pizzas and burgers and fries and all this stuff, but I just eat less of it. And so I would start off with something simple. Back when I was a real big hog, a big pig, I would order an all dress, a medium sized pizza and a fry just for me. Crazy. So that would be eight slices of pizza in a medium. I think it's eight. Yeah. So I, then I, I said, okay, I, I was getting too, too big. You know, I was becoming like a big walrus. So I decided, okay, I got to lose some weight here. So what I did is I started, I would order a medium because, you know, I'm used to eating a medium pizza. And I would just, instead of eating eight slices, I would eat seven. I take the other slice, put it in the fridge, wait till the next day. And instead of drinking a whole, you know, a big Coke, I would drink a small Coke. And eventually, I would slowly, slowly reduce the slices of pizza. And, you know, your stomach shrinks. And incrementally, you get, you know, you, you, you just develop proper habits. And you get better and better and better. You lose weight quick, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly. And if the weight comes off slowly, it's not going to go back up. It's not going to bounce quickly. So slow reduction in your weight. And if you slowly add habits that are healthy, they stick with you. Same thing with writing code. You, you, you slowly, slowly improve the quality of the code. So you write a big chunk of code. Let's say you've written a, you know, a, a bunch of code to access the database. You write it, it's working, okay, everything's cool. I would suggest at that moment when it's still fresh in your head to go and look at the code and see how you can clean it up, make it a little bit more efficient. You know, use extract method, which is a common uh, factory uh, refactoring pattern and so on. And there's whatever, all the other uh, refactorings that you can look up on the web. And you, you, when the code is fresh in your head, you go in there and you do some little changes here and there. Clean it up, clean it up. And whenever you go back to your code the next day or whatever, when you go back, you know, first thing you do, look over the code, look, see if you can see any problem areas, parts of your code that can be easily cleaned up and to make it a bit better. If you insert this um, habit of continuously improving your code that you've written slowly, incrementally, you're going to see in the end, you're going to have much better apps. Okay, that's it for now. I hope you found this interesting. Ciao.